Hey guys, back in January, I released a short here on YouTube showing how I was able to reduce the memory usage on my uh, Proxmox high availability cluster significantly by changing the way I set up my storage. And instead of using ZFS, I switched to NFS. Now, in order for this to work, you will need some sort of a separate storage device from your actual Proxmox server. So there are going to be a couple of caveats to this video that I just want to get out of the way at first. The first caveat that I want to talk about is I'm going to be using a Synology device to set up my NFS share. Obviously, you can set up an NFS share using other methods, other operating systems, other platforms, whatever the case is. There are lots of different ways to set up an NFS share. Again, I'm going to be doing mine on Synology, so you may need to kind of tweak this to fit your settings as far as that part of the process is concerned. Learned. The second caveat to this is that if your Proxmox, whether it's a cluster or, or, or a single node, uh, if it only has a single one gig connection on it, you may run into issues. However, that hasn't necessarily been my experience. Now, when I say that, there's another kind of sub caveat to that. My current Proxmox high availability cluster is running on three Zima boards and Zima boards do have two one gig NICs on them. However, I'm only using one of those NICs on each one. The, the kind of caveat that goes with that is that um, the, the NFS storage server that I'm using is um, a, a Synology DS1621XS Plus with a 10 gig NIC in it. So even though my, my nodes each have one gig, my storage configuration does have a 10 gig configuration. So Try some stuff out before you commit is what I'm going to tell you here. Um, you, you may not be running a lot of high intensity stuff and it may be fine, or you may be running a lot of traffic and it may complicate things. So uh, do some testing on your end before you commit to anything. Just know that uh, my individual nodes are one gig, but my storage node is 10 gig as far as my actual production server. Now, all of that said, uh, in this video, the demonstration that I'm going to be using uh, both sides of the storage and the Proxmox node are both going to be using a one gig NIC. So you can kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like. Okay guys, so here we are. We're looking at my Proxmox test server here. We can see that I've got, uh, what is that? Four, five, six, seven containers. These are just Proxmox containers. There's no VMs or anything like that over here. I've got seven containers on the system. Only one of them is running. Uh, and if we look over here, we are currently using almost 15 gigs of RAM. And that's just from having each of these individual containers in existence with only one of them running. And that's kind of the problem in my opinion, uh, and probably the opinion of other people as well with ZFS. Yes, it's great, but it does use a lot of extra resources. So you'll see over here again in my, in my memory usage, earlier I was up to like 18 gigs. Uh, I had a bunch of containers in here that I'd done testing with. I'd made videos about that sort of thing. I just hadn't done any maintenance yet. So I got rid of all of them and took it down uh, to about three or to about nine gigs, 9.3 gigs there. Um, and then to kind of set up a testing environment, a demonstration environment, I suppose, uh, I went ahead and, and created these local four right here. They're not running. They've each got 64 gigs of storage um, where we can see that kind of over here. And, oh, no, I lied. Let's do, there we go. Okay, 64 gigs of storage and one gig of RAM. That's what all of these different containers over here have. 64 gigs of storage, one gig of RAM. And because of that setup, we can see that that's using an additional five gigs of RAM, even with none of these turned on. So let's go ahead and and, and just, just trash all of these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete all of them. And then what we're gonna do is set up an NFS share over on one of my Synology devices and kind of recreate these containers uh, for the sake of demonstration here. So I'm gonna, I'm going to go over here and trash all of these and then we'll come back. A few moments later. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed the unnecessary containers from the setup here. You can see I've still got Documize, Link Stack, and a template. Uh, Documize and Link Stack, those videos are coming soon, so be sure to get subscribed uh, when those come out so you can check those out, whatever. Uh, but then I've also got my template here. That is kind of the, the, the I just, I, I clone that and then I just quickly deploy other containers. I'll make a video about that later too. But these are the ones I'm just going to leave here for right now. If you look over here though, you'll notice 
Um, now we're down to 9.64 gigs of RAM being used as opposed to that almost 15 that we saw earlier. So with that said, let's jump over to my Synology device and get NFS set up so that we can create an NFS share and start using that as the storage for containers over here. Okay, so here we are. We're on my DS923 Plus. Um, this is the, the 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 Synology device that only has a one gig connection on it, just so we're still on the same page there. What I wanna do is actually first thing, come over to the control panel here, and I'm gonna to go to file services. Now again, this is going to be Synology specific. So this part of the video, you'll wanna fill in the blanks for whatever setup you're using uh, for your configuration. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to where it says NFS. I'm going to enable NFS service, and then you can choose whichever version you'd like to use. I'm gonna use 4.1 because it's also backwards compatible with 2, 3, and 4. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna leave this as it currently is. I'm going to click apply. Right, so our changes have been, been applied there. So what I wanna do now is come back to here. I'm gonna go to a control panel. I'm gonna to go to shared folder and I'm going to create a shared folder. I'm going to call this uh, NFS uh, video, just so I know in the future. I'm going to disable the recycle bin. My location is just going to be uh, on my, my main volume here. That's gonna be fine. You can put a description in if you'd like. I'm gonna click next here. I'm not going to encrypt the folder. I suppose you could if you wanted to, but it may cause issues. I haven't actually tested it uh, in, in the capacity of using it as an NFS volume for Proxmox. So be careful with that, I guess. We're gonna click next. Um, I'm not gonna worry about any of this. I'm gonna click next. Great, all of this looks fine. So I'm going to give um, some access to, to users that may need access to it. And then what I'm going to do is click edit. I'm gonna right click on here and click edit on that video, uh, that NFS video share there. And what I wanna do is come over here to NFS permissions. I'm going to create the host name or IP. Uh, basically uh, you could specify only certain IP addresses can access this NFS share if you wanted to. And for security reasons, you probably should. However, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to kind of leave it wide open to anything on my network. So what I'm gonna do, is just leave it open for absolutely anything on my network. Be careful with that. Make sure you use the right security for your setup. Uh, privilege is gonna be read and write. All of this looks fine. Let me double check that all of that. Oh, no mapping. I wanna switch this to map root to guest. That's how I got it to work for my setup anyway. If I'm wrong there, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd appreciate that. And I'm sure other people would as well. So I'm gonna click save. And then we've got this right here, so that's good. And now I'm gonna click save yet again. So at this point, we actually have our NFS share already set up and ready to go. So now what we can do is actually go back over to our Proxmox and add that NFS share as storage. So let's check that out. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over to my data center and I'm going to go over here to storage. Then I'm going to click add and then I'm going to click NFS right here. Then we're just gonna give it a name. Uh, I'm, again, I'm gonna call this NFS video like so. The server will be 192.168.0.83, I think. Yeah, that looks right. And then, give this a second. Oh, there it was. There's volume one slash NFS video, just like we set up over on Synology. So that tells us the, the NFS share over there is working appropriately. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on there. And then we can select all of the different options that we want for this. I'm not gonna do uh, snippets or Z, oops or the, the VZ dump. I'm gonna do disk image, ISO image, container template, and container. Uh, all of those are gonna work perfectly for my uh, for my needs here. Of course, you can adjust that as you need to, again, for your particular use case. Uh, now that I've got all of this, uh, you can also set a backup retention if you wanna do that. Again, that's completely up to you on how you want to do that. Uh, I'm gonna click add right here. And right here is NFS video. We're gonna give this a second to do its thing, and then hopefully it will switch over just like that. So if we click here, we can see uh, 1.4 terabytes of 3.83 terabytes there for usage. We've got all of this available information. We've got VM disks, we've got container volumes, we've got ISO images, container templates, and permissions. So what I wanna do to make sure that everything is working appropriately is download a container template to that new NFS share. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is actually go back over here to, our, uh, to our, our main thing here, where it says prox, that's what I named my particular node. I'm gonna go to shell, I'm gonna do PV EAM update. And then I'm gonna do PV EAM available. 
basically we're just going to update and then show whatever's available for downloading. So I'm gonna click enter. And right there are all of the different options that we can download to our system as our template. What I wanna do though, is I'm gonna grab Debian. Oh, you know what, let's, yeah, let's just grab Debian uh, 11 there. Copy. And I'm gonna do uh, download um, NFS video. Oops, I lied, it's PVEAM. Download NFS video. We're gonna paste. So now it is downloading the, uh, the, 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 the container template for that. It says it's finished. Now what we can do to verify that that's actually true is come back over to, uh, to our Synology device. We can go to File Station. Then we can go to NFS Video and we can go to Templates and we can go to cache and right there is our Debian 11 that we just downloaded uh, and, and that time is wrong, but that's where we downloaded it to. Wait, let me make sure I did that right. Oh, that must be the actual date when it was modified. I just had a blank out moment there, but we just created this, so there's no way that something from the past could be there. So that is just when that template was modified. So I just, I had a blank moment there. So we know that it's there, that's good. So what we're gonna do is come back over to our Proxmox configuration here. Uh, what I wanna do is create a new container. Um, oops, I lied, I wanna, yeah, no, that's right. I wanna create a new container. Uh, we're, our node will be Prox, our host name, we're gonna call this uh, video one. We're gonna give it a password. Like so, and we're gonna go to template. Now you can see for our storage, we've got NFS video up here. Whereas before we would have just had local. So we can toggle back and forth between those depending on what we've got where. What I'm gonna do is come over here and I'm gonna grab that NFS video and Debian 11 right there. I'm gonna click next. I'm going to, the storage can also be NFS video. Again, I'm gonna give it, we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier. We're gonna give it 64 gigs of storage. We're gonna give it two cores. We're gonna give it, one gig of RAM, our network will set to DHCP. I think that's perfectly fine. Our DNS, I like to set some, some, some DNS separate from my internal DNS, just so I don't run into any kind of errors later on. So I'm using Cloudflare, you can use Google or Quad9 or whatever DNS settings you wanna use there, or you can leave this completely blank and it will just take the DNS servers from your, uh, from your DHCP setup. So however you wanna handle that, it's perfectly fine. I just like to use Cloudflare DNS for my containers here. So next I'm going to go to confirm. I'm gonna make sure all of this looks good and I'm gonna click finish. Now I had the opportunity there to, to start after finishing, but I don't wanna do that just yet. I wanna give this a second to start up. And uh, once this is done, we're gonna go take a look at something. Okay, <clears throat> just literally a couple of seconds later, it says task okay. So what we're gonna do is come back over to Synology. Uh, we're going to come over here to, um, to the root here. We're gonna go to, I think images. Yeah, there it is. There's 100. Um, just like that, we can see that that is uh, accurate as far as the time is concerned. Uh, so what I wanna do now is come back over here to Proxmox. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna come back up to summary. And here we can see um, that uh, this is still down at 9.36 gigs of storage, even though we've added another Proxmox container. But because we're not using ZFS and we've switched over to NFS, um, we don't have the, the the memory overhead of the ZFS system. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna clone this. I'm gonna call this uh, video two. And I'm actually gonna create four of these, just like we had earlier with the four containers on the ZFS side of things. And then we're gonna give it a couple of minutes and then we're going to take a look at the RAM usage. Okay, so now all four of our different containers have been uh, they're set up, they're not running because they weren't running when we had the the, the four ZFS containers up and running. Uh, again, if we take a look, they're one gig of RAM, two cores, 64 gigs of hard drive space, all the same configuration that we had before. Now, if we come back over to our Synology device or wherever our NFS shares are set up, we can see that all four of those containers are now here and uh, they're all, you can see when they were created was just a couple of minutes ago. Now, what's cool about this is if we come back over here and we take a look at our Proxmox uh, dashboard over here, we can see that we went from basically 15 gigs of RAM uh, back over here to nine, less than nine and a half gigs of RAM by just switching the file system. So one of the other kind of cool things in my opinion is that our, our, our Proxmox is, in, is on one piece of hardware and our storage is on a separate piece of hardware. So if our Proxmox uh, device node, whatever, crashes, goes down, whatever. We've still got our data separate from that. 
So just to kind of reiterate here, be sure that you do some testing before you commit to this. Make sure that your, your, your network throughput can handle uh, that much data being transferred back and forth between your, your, your Proxmox setup and your NFS setup. Make sure that you've got the throughput on your network to handle that, uh, both on the, on the Proxmox as well as the, the NFS side of things. Just do some testing before you commit. That's gonna be super, super important. But with that said, I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts are on this. Tell me what I did wrong. Tell me what I did right. All of that can go down in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on all of this. Uh, if you've got other ideas for containers, setups, whatever, also leave that in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you guys would like to see here on the channel. I've got a bunch of ideas, but of course, I always like to talk to you guys and find out what you guys are interested in seeing here on the channel. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I'll talk to you in the next video.